My name is Peter Adams. Uh, I have lived here for 25 years. I first lived in a bus for eight years with no electricity, no running water, no telephone, no radio, no TV. But it allowed me to get grounded into the landscape so that now I have those tools with which to do my more mature artwork. Growing up, my brother was the artist. He went to a special art school, okay? I just went to Pershing High, and I did English and history and grammar, and I was gonna go on to university because I was not the artist. It was when I was 28 years old. I had done my furniture, carpentry work in Alaska. I had my university background. I said, oh, I want to be an artist. <laughs> I started off programmed to go to university to study to become a lawyer, doctor, medicine man, chief, you know. Then I had the kind of wisdom to travel right after graduation. So I went to Korea and I worked in Korea for two years. The first year as a teacher of English. Then I was invited to work on a farm. And so working on the farm was really exciting because I was using my hands and building massive tool sheds and silage sheds. And so when I left, instead of going back to graduate school in business, which I could have, I then became a carpenter apprentice for four years. I built a house in Hobart and it burned down in a bushfire. I had no house to live in and all that, and I was thinking of buying another piece of property, and I had a student, first year student, whose name was Mick Carter. And Mick Carter came to me one day and said, you're not a bad person, even if you are a teacher. If you would like to look at a piece of property where I live, here's where it's located. So I came down. And within two minutes, I knew it would be a good place to live. There's a certain wildness to this country that uh, originally captivated me and still does. Tasmania, there's something here which is ancient. You know, you walk on this land, it's windswept, it's harsh, but there's an energy to it because there's something about living at Roaring Beach or in the bush or in the wild that enhances your ability to create in a, a kind of a richer way, more insightful way than somebody who's just brought up in a city and only knows the city. You feel it. So you even, you're in the wild, but you feel something that's millions and millions of years old. So that's, that, that grabbed my whole body and soul and I wanted to stay for that. Again, for me, in the summer, once school was out, my mom drove us right to the cottage. Three months, barefoot, swimming, rowing the boat, being on the lake, hiking in the woods. So yeah, that was really important for me, to connect to nature. That if I was stayed in Detroit, heaven knows, I don't think I'd be sitting here today. The focus now for me is wood and stone. Those two materials are readily available. In Tasmania, you know, it's known for its timbers. I tend to choose now hue and pine, which is a rare species, endangered. But the amount of time I put into a piece of wood could take a year, year and a half. So I'm not just being frivolous with it and just making a you know, a little something you sell to a tourist. And I like hue and pine because it, because of its ancientness, and you know, I can be carving a piece of wood that could be 2,000 years old. Think of that. That tree was putting out oxygen that might have gone into the lungs 
of Jesus Christ. And so as I'm carving, you hold that thought in mind of, of the, 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 what the wood actually represents so, and stone. The stone I use is found on Roaring Beach or around this property. I don't shape it. I just use it as I find it. Now stone, as you know, around here is uh, dolerite, which was put down 300 million years ago. So when you hold a nice round stone, you're, you're holding uh, stuff from the Jurassic period of time. You know, even back in 1976, or I just take what pieces of wood I had, just, just start shaping and I could manipulate it. It's a three-dimensional aspect I have. So two-dimensional, I can't do it. In three dimensions, I can do it. It's like in a symphony. Some people play trombone really well, but can't play a violin. It's the same in the arts. You, I'm a sculptor of 3D, but I can't paint. People still nowadays think I can draw. Think, nope. Can't. So when I talk to students or anybody who comes here, say, oh, I'd like to be this, but I can't do this. You can. You just have to have the desire to, to find your way of being with the material. And there was something will come out and it's unique to you. I remember, I remember I was commissioned to do a piece for the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. They wanted, they said, we want a piece for our museum, but could you send us a sketch of your proposal? I was petrified. And I thought, oh, I'll never get it. I can't remember the process, and that's how I got it, and then I, there, it's still on permanent exhibition, so they love it. You know, I just wanted to work as hard as I could to, to achieve my full potential, and I'm happy with it, because I give it all my thought, all my time, all my energies. It's like you can look back on your life and say, yeah, I, I, you know, I gave it a good shot. And I think that's important. <laughs>